Hi, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm an astrophysicist with the American Museum of Natural History. And this is my desk, and this is my office. When adults would ask that annoying question, what do you want to be when you grow up? From age 11, my answer has been astrophysicist. My first public lecture was, I, th I just turned 15 or was almost 15. But I think I was otherwise unremarkable. I, I, in fact, I kept my report cards from all those years. And in there, no teacher is saying, hey, he's gonna go far. Hey, he's the best in the class. Hey, look, hey. No, more. no one ever said that about me at any time. <laughs> okay. This is a four and a half billion year old meteorite. Look, it survived four and a half billion years in the universe. It could survive my sack. I made this lamp when I was 12. My favorite planet then and now is Saturn. And I've had it as my desk lamp since middle school. I'm enchanted by every occasion that an artist takes to express the influence that the universe may have upon them. Oh, they had a garage sale. I, it was for a steal. Would Van Gogh have been cool with this or not? I, I don't know. So this was actually a gift. I like odd action figures. This was also a gift. This is the Tyson doll. A hard, no one has hardly ever Ask me about this. I, I hide it down below. It's a, it's a gay doll, actually. Time Magazine published an article trying to find out whether this was designed to look like the two best known Tysons at the time. Mike Tyson, the boxer, and uh, Tyson Beckford, the, the supermodel. And they concluded that it didn't look like either one of them. Now, should I stop the story there, or should I continue? There are more. Well, okay. So, uh, there's a photo of me coming off a wrestling mat back when I was in college. And this arm structure is exactly my arm. That was just really creepy correspondence there. Of course, he's bald and I have a full, you know, the afro of the day. You know, that's what, that, that was in style at the time, okay? Uh, so <laughs> but I, I would later reflect on those times of my ambitions to become a, a great athlete as fulfilling the wishes of others. Uh, I have a whole list of things people told me to become. Computer salesman, how about that? No one saw me as I saw myself. Not teachers, not people in the street. People who, whose duty it is to advise you on career paths, none of them, none of them. Uh, and then there's this whole thing about role models. Okay, so let's go back in time. I'm 10 years old, 11 years old. I'm a black kid from the Bronx. Now, I, I need to find another black person from the Bronx who became an astrophysicist so that I can become an astrophysicist? That, excuse me? No, no. No one would ever become anything that no one before them had become if that's how you select your role models. Isaac Newton, this is my man. Isaac, okay? I've read almost every word he's ever written, and the man was plugged into the universe like no one before or since. And I'm just reminded that people come before you. Uh, of course, you're not the first to have to think about the universe. Yeah, this is the first book I ever published. My brother is an artist, and he illustrated the book. The very first book. Published that while I was in graduate school. Uh, ten books, uh, as of three weeks from now. Ten books. Yeah, there's always this urge to want to sort of stick it to those people who said, oh, he will never make it. But what does that get you? What I have found is that with a little bit of rational thought, you can channel all that emotion to just keep moving forward. But I have, I have this fantasy that in a couple of years I just give it all up and then and, you know, become a scientist again <laughs> and go back into the lab because the, I still have attention to give to the universe. It's waiting for me. <laughs>